Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and as you may have figured out due to reality kind of just breaking down around me because of bad lighting, I'm not actually in my room right now. I'm actually in space. That'll show them flurfs. In all seriousness, I will try and fix the lighting problem so that I can get the green screen up and running. That way I can do some fancier things with my videos. Anyway, now that we've riled up Flat Earthers by putting me in space, let's take a look at one of Level Earth Observer's videos, where he tries to debunk the globe. What have you got for us, Elio? Check this out from Noah, their latest so-called geostationary weather satellite known as the GOES-18. Lads, you blew it already. The first image that comes from the GOES-18 shows the Earth to be something that's scientifically impossible, i.e. a ball. So it sounds like Level Earth Observer expects them to put a satellite in space and then it come back with pictures just of a flat Earth. That's what it sounds like. Even if Level Earth Observer were to be put into space himself on a satellite and he could see that the Earth is a sphere, he would go, well, this can't be right because it's scientifically impossible for Earth to be a ball. Obviously not a great start by Level Earth Observer, but you know, I thought that he was going to bring up the colors and he didn't, so I do have to give him a point there. A lot of flat earthers would say, ah, oh, all the colours are different to all the other images, so therefore it must be fake, not realising that colour grading is a thing. <laughs> that was weird, it felt like the colour drained from me for a second. So already we know this thing is a fraud. Straight off the bat, because they're showing the earth to be a ball, which no one on this earth can prove with a scientific demonstration. It can. It's exactly the opposite. Everyone can prove the globe is scientifically impossible. Large standing bodies of water can't display convexity upon its surface. All liquids are subject to forces. It is up to you to demonstrate that a particular force cannot act on water. So if you want to say that gravity would not affect water, for example, you need to tell us exactly why gravity would not affect water. Until then, water can be affected by the force of gravity because there's no reason to think that it wouldn't. Tower cranes and pendulums can't be dead still whilst doing ludicrous speeds in all different directions. Okay, here is a challenge for Level Earth Observer. How about you calculate the force that Earth spin should have on a tower crane? How about that? If you're right, then you should be able to calculate that Earth spin would have a significant impact on tower cranes. From all of the calculations that I have done, however, the spin of the Earth would have negligible impact on a tower crane. So Level Earth Observer, if you disagree with that, do the calculations. Prove me wrong. And you can't have an air pressure system next to a vacuum without a solid wall separating the two. I've been saying this for a long time and will continue to say it. Under your idea of how pressure works, how do you get lower pressure with altitude? Lower pressure with altitude is a fact that happens on Earth. If pressure always tries to equalize no matter what, then how do you get a pressure gradient? I'm yet to hear a satisfactory answer as to why this is. Now, there is an answer that flat earthers can give. However, it's the same answer that globe earthers have been giving all this time. Demonstrable truths facts that can be tested and verified by all, the results of which prove this thing on our screen is scientifically impossible. No, Elio, the problem is that you fail to understand how you're supposed to scale these concepts up and down. And that is why calculations exist, because it's very easy to say, well, this thing fast, so anything that go fast must be like this thing. But that's not always the case. Yes, this thing might go fast, but what particular aspects of it going fast cause it to act like it acts, and how do you apply it to something much larger? That is the question that Level Earth Observer has been failing to consider. Pinned comment for any practical references from Globe Believers to refute those three fundamental truths that I've just stated that prove this thing on our screen to be scientifically impossible. Don't want any words, explanations, cartoons, diagrams, stories, I'm only interested in scientific demonstrations that can be tested and verified by all. The problem is, and this seems to be a recurring problem with Flat Earthers, if you don't understand what you're being shown, then you can't understand why you're wrong. And that is why I put some questions to Level Earth Observer, because it's easy to just show something and say you're wrong. 
But if they don't understand it, do you really expect them to listen to you? Scientific papers, for example, are just full of explanations to help the reader understand what it is they're actually reading. Oh dear, so we've gone from a scientifically impossible ball, an image of a scientifically impossible ball, to a firework display, to now CGI. Can you not see the problem? <laughs> Dear. Well, yeah, they're going to use CGI of things in space because they're not going to send another camera up into space to take pictures of the thing that is taking pictures of the Earth. Look, no one's pointing to CGI images of satellites and saying that they're real based on those CGI images. No one does that. Usually it's more to do with verifying that the ISS is real and verifying that other satellites are real as well. And then we come to this. I'm often cited this kind of stuff from globe believers as proof of satellites. But all this is, is a simulation that's got his data from old technology, as we're about to see. Nothing to do with satellites in space. Well then, you must explain how it manages to get all this information for the entire area that it's covering. This might be fairly easy to do if it was just one state of America, but it's not just one state of America. It's the entire US. And not just that, it's actually almost half the globe. Anyway, explain how they managed to get data for half the globe using old technology that definitely isn't satellites. If you've got a geostationary satellite watching half of the Earth consistently, continuously, then you wouldn't need hundreds upon hundreds of Victorian technology weather balloons, would you? And that is the data that these hundreds of balloons get launched daily. Okay, Elio, first things first, you are never, and I mean never, going to get a job in IT with that kind of attitude. Because there is this concept known as redundancy, and it is very important in things like IT. Just try asking Google, hey, why do you use hard drives, which is an old technology to store information, when you can just use these SSDs that you've got to store information? Why are you using both? And the reason why is because SSDs are pretty good if information needs to be retrieved quickly. When this video initially goes live, YouTube will probably have it stored on an SSD so that it can be retrieved faster. But, you know, give it a year or two and YouTube might go, well, this video doesn't get a whole lot of traffic, so let's just put it on a mechanical hard drive because someone might want to watch it, but it's not going to be needed as quickly. This is where LEO would go, well, if SSDs are faster, then why use mechanical hard drives at all? And this is because mechanical hard drives do cost less for more storage space. But not only that, they last longer than SSDs as well. So yes, hard drives are old technology that's still used, but it's used because it has advantages over newer technology. Newer technology doesn't mean that it's a silver bullet for everything. But let's talk a bit more about redundancy because I've focused more on advantages of old technology compared to newer technologies. But redundancy is a whole other thing. Redundancy essentially means that if a component of something fails for whatever reason, the rest of it can still operate without that. NASA spacecraft, for example, often have four computers on board all calculating the exact same thing, just in case one of any of these computers gives an error. If you give these computers something to calculate and all four of them agree on the answer, well, then you've got your answer. But if one of them gives an incorrect answer, well, then you've got the other three to go, well, no, that's not correct. So now LEO is probably asking, well, how does this all relate back to weather satellites and stuff? And the answer is, well, let's say that you put a satellite in space, you fancy new satellite, and you decide, okay, we don't need any weather balloons anymore. We've just got our fancy satellite. Then Sephiroth comes along, summons a meteor, and that meteor just completely obliterates your fancy new satellite. In that case, where are you getting your weather data from? It's not coming from the satellite that's been obliterated because it no longer work. It's not coming from your weather balloons because you've decommissioned those. If you leave your weather balloons up there, well, if your satellite gets destroyed, 
You've still got the weather balloons there. So even though it's pretty bad that you've lost a satellite, it's not as bad because you've got a redundancy there. And I'd argue that they're not even necessarily a redundancy. Weather balloons will have their own advantages over satellites, and satellites will have their own advantages over weather balloons. It doesn't have to be one or the other. It can be a combination of both. Look at that. 11.7 billion dollars. 11.7 billion dollars for that fraud. A firework display. An image of something that's scientifically impossible. CGI. And then simulations, which the data has obviously come from the hundreds of weather balloons that get released daily. If it all comes from weather balloons, then what did they spend 11 billion dollars on? Did they spend 11 billion dollars upgrading their weather balloon tech? It's an absolute joke and mockery for any of these globe believers and disgusting that they're willing to pay that much money on fraudulent pantomimes like this Go is 18 when millions are suffering. I think, I can't remember the last, I think it was half a million in America alone are homeless the last time I looked. It certainly was a ridiculous figure. So Elio, I actually agree with you that that is a problem. However, I disagree with you because I don't think that the way to solve that problem is to just stop putting things into space. Maybe one of the solutions to homelessness is to build more high density housing. That's a different issue and we can put things into space whilst building more high density housing. We can also do things like manage food better so that everybody has enough to eat. And guess what? We can put stuff into space while doing that as well. You see, I'm very much in favour of making people's lives better. I'm also in favour of scientific advancements. But Flat Earth doesn't seem to make any scientific advancements. I do hope that Level Earth Observer will come to realise that he doesn't need a conspiracy in order to try and make the world a better place. In fact, having conspiracies can often make the world worse. Because when you have a conspiracy, you often don't focus on real solutions to real problems. You often focus on fake solutions to real problems, or fake solutions to fake problems even. What I'm saying is, no problem has ever been solved by someone saying that the Earth is flat. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know what you'd like me to make videos on in the future. Don't forget to ring the bell because I know not a lot of you do that. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Shaki, Wolfie, Mori, Greymore Ghost, Kid Vicious, Sarcha Campbell, Militant, Agnostic, and Elka Lubick. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me... BASE!